Uh, so first, there are six key assumptions uh, Tosaki made in deriving uh, his final solution. And these six assumptions, first, the clay water system uh, is considered homogeneous. Okay. And it's a complete saturation, so fully saturated system. And third assumption, uh, water is incompressible. And then soil greens are also incompressible. Uh, so here, I, I want to put a note here, uh, Soil greens and soil skeleton, these are two different concepts. Okay. Greens basically uh, make up soil skeleton. So here we assume soil greens are incompressible, but the skeleton itself can still deform. Okay. So these two are different. And then it's 1D flow. So basically water flows in the direction of compression only. So this is, if you're pressing the soil from above, it's a vertical compression. So water flows in the vertical direction only. And last one, Darcy's law is valid. So these are the six key assumptions in Tersaki's 1D consolidation theory. Uh, so in Tersaki's 1D consolidation theory in the solution, uh, I'm going to discuss these two different cases. The first one, this is called one-way drainage case. Okay. So this one-way drainage, if you look at this setup here, we have our clay layer. Okay. So that's the consolidating layer. And of course you're pressing this layer from above. So that's your sandy field on top. And um, for one, the drainage case, the only way or the only direction water can flow is one way. So in this case, the only way water can drain uh, is by flowing out from above. Okay, so that's the direction. So that's why it's called one-way drainage. So this is impermeable and this is permeable. And the distance this HDR, this is a very important parameter. So this HDR is the length of the maximum drainage pass. So for one-way drainage, it equals to the thickness of the consolidating layer because that's the longest distance. So that's maximum drainage. So that's the maximum drainage pass. Basically the uh, water at the bottom of this layer has to travel HDR to reach that uh, permeable layer. And if you think of this consolidation process on the right-hand side, this is that spring cylinder model. So basically water from layer one, if we subdivide this into four layers or four sections, water from layer one has to drain before anything from layer two can drain out. Okay. And this happens to three as well. So some of the water from layer two has to drain first before layer three or water in layer three can drain. Okay. So if you think of that process, then this consolidation settlement uh, is not complete until enough water flows out of the soil such that this delta U is zero throughout the system. So this is the pore pressure plot here. Okay. Near the top, at the surface where water drains, that excess pore pressure is zero, but that excess pore pressure increases with depth. Okay. Okay. So at the bottom, you have the largest excess pore water pressure because it takes that water the longest time to drain. Okay. So 
That's why it dissipates from the top and then propagates to the bottom. So you have this dissipation of pore pressure with depths, this profile here. So this settlement as C at time T is proportional to the amount of water drains, which is proportional to the pore pressure, excess pore water pressure. So if you can predict the pore water pr pr uh, pressure profile throughout the depths, then you can basically predict how much sediment has occurred. And that's for one-way drainage case. And then for the second, this is two-way drainage. So the thinking behind the solution is still the same. If you can predict the pore water pressure profile, you can link that to the consolidation sediment. And the difference here, this is uh, two-way drainage. You have a sandy layer at the bottom and you have sandy layer on top. Okay. So water can drain both ways. That's why it's called a two-way drainage. So this is permeable. And permeable on top as well. So if you see sandy field, sandy layers, Immediately, you know that it's a drainage, it's a permeable layer because water can drain from these layers. And then the maximum distance will be the one at the center. So at the middle of the clay layer, this is the maximum distance water has to travel, basically to drain, and same to the bottom. So that's why you see I have two HDR here. So HDR is the maximum, the length of the maximum drainage distance. So it's half of the thickness of the clay layer for this two-way drainage case. So same thought for that spring cylinder model. So water can drain both ways. And this consolidation settlement is not complete until all access water, water pressure um, is zero throughout the layer. So for two-way drainage, uh, this is the pore water pressure profile so you have zero near the top, at the top or at the bottom, that's where the drainage happens. And then it gradually increases with the depths until the maximum value is at the middle. Okay. So that's the pore to pressure, pressure profile distribution. Okay. Again, in Tosaki's solution, basically we're predicting pore water pressure distribution and then link that to consolidation to sediment. Uh, so let's look at Tosaki's solution here. So the basic or the governing equations for this 1D consolidation, as I mentioned, since you're predicting pore, pore water pressure, so this is a governing equation for pore pressure distribution. In, in this equation, so this is a coefficient called coefficient of consolidation, which basically includes the property of the soil. So this is coefficient of permeability. In gamma W, unit weight of water. And then the uh, that parameter MV here, this is coefficient of volume compressibility. And coefficient of volume compressibility basically relates to coefficient of compressibility. A sub V, which is basically an instantaneous slope of that E log sigma prime curve. So it's delta void ratio over delta sigma prime. So that's basically a slope. And if you solve this for U, so you get the solution uh, basically of excess pore water pressure U as a function of time and depth Z here. So this is the solution from that PDE. So you have this uh, excess pore water pressure. Okay. So you here, excess water pressure. So this is um, actually what I used in the spring model. That's delta U. So this is a function of depths of depths and the time. Okay. So it gives you the pore water excess pore water pressure at particular depths for a given time, 
And then we can link this to um, settlement. And to use Tasaki's solution, uh, there are two types of uh, consolidation we're going to um, define. So first one is degree consolidation at depth C. So I'm going to call this degree consolidation capital U sub C. So this is degree consolidation at depth C is related to pore water, access pore water pressure change. Where that U zero or U naught is the access pore water pressure at depth Z at time T equals to zero. So that's basically the initial access pore water pressure. And then U Z So T at current time. Okay. So this is from uh, Tosaki's solution using. And on the right hand side, this is basically variation of that degree consolidation with uh, TV, the time factor, and then Z and uh, HDR. But what we're going to use more often in the calculation is this average degree consolidation. So this U, this is more, com more commonly used. Uh, so in this course, uh, we're going to use this average degree consolidation. So here, this is the final. So this is the final consolidation settlement from part one. And then the SCT, so this is settlement at time t. So again, in this course, uh, we're going to use this one. And this gives you the average consolidation of the entire clay layer. Um, so this u, average degree consolidation. Okay. Again, this comes from Tarsagi's solution. So let me uh, step back. So from Tasagi's solution, you get basically this pore, excess pore water pressure solution as a function of depth Z and time T. From that, you get the degree of consolidation at a particular depth Z, and then you integrate that throughout the entire depth to get solution for this average degree of consolidation. Okay. So that's uh, what's shown on this slide here. So this is the average degree consolidation. Again, this comes from so from that one consolidation solution, you get the excess pore water pressure U, and then you get you get the degree consolidation at depth Z at a particular time T. And then you integrate that to get this average degree consolidation. Okay, so that's this U. Okay. So that's how you get this. Again, this comes from Tosaki's solution. So this gives you basically uh, this equation here, but more often we're going to use a tab uh, table in this equation. So you have this time factor T sub V, capital T sub V. So this time factor here is a function of two things basic. One is the um, uh, three things. One is the coefficient of consolidation. So this will we call CV. In CV, remember, so CV is a property or it's a function of permeability of soil. And then HDR, this is drainage distance maximum drainage distance and T is time. So this is actually the solution we're going to use. And on the right hand side, this is basically U versus TV plot. And that gives you a relationship between average degree consolidation and 
this is time t as a function of these two parameters, CV and HDR. So one way to use this is to use these two expressions or this curve here, or the other way is to use this table here. So this table gives you that variation of time factor TV with average degree of consolidation U here. So that's the table actually we're going to use uh, to solve this uh, time rate of consolidation problem. 